Hey guys, it's time for another Redneck Review. This is Robert Lawrence here. I uh, Today we're going to be doing the uh, number four of Guardians of the Galaxy from the Marvel Now line. Now if you watch my current reviews, you know that I love this series. Uh, it's done by two of my favorite uh, people, uh, Brian Michael Bendis and uh, Sarah Pichel, uh, who uh, you know does all her art from Rome and stuff like that. They, uh, they have really done a great job trying to revitalize this book and uh, trying to make it a popular hit. Uh, even though it's got a movie coming out, that's the one thing I don't like. I don't like them to uh, go and make... I don't like them to make a comic better just because the movie's coming out. I think you're a comic book company. You should be able to make a hit comic book. But anyway, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number four is I'm going to warn parents, has some sexual content in it. I'm going to go over a little bit of it. And uh, so if that is a problem with anybody right now, uh, please turn it off. But uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number four is a 399 book rated T for teen. And if you look down here by the uh, by the barcode, you'll see the kind of ratings your uh, your uh, comp books have, just like uh, you would with a video game. Well, anyway, let's start things off. This one starts off right after the events of uh, the first arc. And we see the Guardians here at a bar. And Drax the Destroyer and them are just laughing and getting it up, you know. He says, did I tell you this place is This place is it? That's it. That's it. It's a liberation. This is the worst place I've ever been to, Star-Lord says. And I've been to the Cancerverse. Excuse me? Not, not you, this place. You guys do, a, do you like to blow... You guys like to blow off steam? To our friend Groot, you saved the day and saved our lives. To Groot. And he goes up there, this little great picture. I am Groot, which you know, is uh, all he's going to say is going to be played by Vin Diesel in the movie. So I uh, I can't wait to have something that Vin Diesel's acting abilities just are thrown away at. Uh, anyway, it starts off with them at the bar. At, Tony Stark has joined the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. He's... Um, He's talking with Rocket Raccoon and Gamora, and you know, he tells them, you know, I, all this new stuff or whatnot, he says, you know, hey, Quill, is there any way we can contact Earth? Earth, your home planet? Why? I want to make sure it's still there. I can take care of that for you, uh, Stark, here. What is this? You want to talk to someone on Earth? That will do it. This is a phone. You just program th this here and say you want, what, the Avengers Mansion? So you, this is a phone that calls across the galaxy. I don't know what a phone is, Rocket says, but you are easily impressed. This is a container that holds liquid. <laughs> he t Rocket Raccoon is just showing him how uh, far back humanity is compared to the rest of the universe. And he says, you just programmed... He, said, he goes, come on, Rocket. On Earth, I have the best phone on, on Earth, and I can get a signal from one half of a New New York to the other. Honestly, I don't know how you live on that blankety blank world. Uh, well, I'm very rich, Gamora says. I mean, uh, Stark says. I'm very rich and a famous superhero. Does that bravado work wor work where you come from? And we turn the page. And Tony Stark is still talking. Takes him another page to get uh, in here. He goes, Almost every time. And you know what happened. Drinks are involved. They keep going. You go, you're going to have to do better out there. I can do better. And, you know, it's really, it's really kind of sad. And, you know, if this review bothers anybody, I would say turn it off now. But we, fi we find Tony Stark in bed with Gamora. And uh, he says, she goes, so I'm going back to the bar. Yeah, yeah, okay. Apparently, uh... Apparently it was a rough ride, but anyway, I'm not going to spend any more time on that. Anyway, she gets into her uh, battle suit and gets off the ship and goes to uh, outside when all of a sudden, as she's heading back to the bar, she's caught in the si sights of a sniper. Her eyes flare and a bolt goes right through her uh, body from an energy blast. And the other Guardians are still back at the bar. Uh, they will sing songs of your legend, Rocket. They will tell stories of your 
I think your large friend is going to get removed. He's talk she's talking about Drax. He's got this picture right here where, uh, you know, they're just trying to, uh, you know, live it up because they managed to afford a uh, major invasion and not get arrested for it. Because I think your large friend is going to uh, going to get us removed. Do you have a ship parked around here? What is parked? She asked. Are you stationed here or are you visiting? My ship is right outside, but don't let strangers. Oh, so so is mine, and I'm not a. Uh, so sorry, you know. And all of a sudden, the uh, conversation goes to black when he sees a group of Spartanics uh, guards. I know you probably can't see that; it's kind of pixelated. But um, <clears throat> we uh, he yells at guys, Spark Spartanics Royal uh, Royals, and they're just over here trying to be nonchalant and uh, greeting them or just playing cards with the other stuff. And all of a sudden, the Spartanic sees him. He goes. It, he goes, it's them, yes, he goes, yes, yes, it, it is us, and, you know, Drax is just enjoying the moment <laughs> way, way too much. Uh, anyway, back to Gamora, she's outside on the street, trying to uh, move to get in there while this uh, hooded, this uh, shadowy figure is coming towards her. Uh, he says, I expected much more. The uh, daughter of Thanos dances across the system as she, as if she has no care. Do you think so much of yourself that you think there is nothing that I that could stop you, or do you think so little of yourself that you didn't know that there is a bounty on your head? I'm just curious. And he's saying this while he's holding a gun straight over her chest right here. So the most dangerous woman in the galaxy is in a bad way, and you know. He goes, the guy that's doing it, we finally say, it's not anybody we know. I don't think I don't think this is a major character in Marvel, at least not the Guardians in this run or the last one, because I read all those. And um, he just says, you know, a life-changing bounty, dead or alive, let it be recorded for all time. Maxil Maxil the Accuser has taken Gamora as an or Ben Titan. Well, while this is going on, the uh, Guardians are still. You know, having a tussle and start starting a bar fight to get away from the Spartanics. A real uh, Star Wars-esque moment here. So uh, I'm glad I was here for it. And during the middle of this, you know, uh, Star-Lord's still trying to talk to this one girl he's been trying to get a date with. He goes, hey, 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 where are you going? You're, you're oh, don't worry about them. He, that all of a sudden we hear from the crowd, I am Groot! And uh, he goes, get your katrunking flippers off me, you regalian, uh, uh, girl, I don't want to say that word either, I don't like to do the bad language on here, I'm trying to be a better person. We're not amu amused by you, he says, I thought we had something, <laughs> you know, all this is going behind him, he's trying to still make this, uh, this hookup happen, and, uh, you know, it's a fun little moment, uh, a little inappropriate for possibly a kid moment, but it it's still fun, and, the Spartax guards are just not equipped to handle the Guardians at all. He punches him. Drax like Drax is basically on the level of the Hulk. He is that powerful. He's a space Hulk who can also fly and shoot energy blasts. So imagine the Hulk with a gun. Yeah, and uh, think about that for a moment. Well, anyway, see, right as we're going into this uh, final moment, uh, the uh, Rogue Accuser that is after Gamora, is all of a sudden taken by shock that she's still alive, and she just goes and punches it, kicks, side kicks him in the stomach. And it's a furious battle between the two. Really good art in here. Uh, I've got to say to uh, the artist, she is an amazing, amazing artist. He goes, who put the bounty on my head? Who sent you? And she just continues to beat the snot out of him before he can say anything. He goes, who sent you? Who sent you? And he uh, he pulls an old uh, Boba Fett here, weapons on his side, and uh, it manages to graze her just a little bit. She manages to grab his gun. He, she goes, I'll ask you one more time. Who sent you? And all of a sudden, the energy blast finally hits her, and she's stunned for a moment. We see a Stark still on the sh ship, uh, basically in his underwear, and 
uh, trying to contact Pepper. He goes, Pepper, ha Tony, wow, it worked. Can you hear me? He says, where are you? Um, looks like I can see you, but you can't see me. You can't see me. See me. You're looking at me. You look like a million. Now, he goes, what if I was in the shower? Do you want to do do that because I could hold on? Or <laughs> yeah, Tony Stark is just an incorrigible, you know, dog looking for his next bone. Anyway, uh, he goes, outer space more or less is where I am. Are you okay? Are are you, he asks. What happened in England? What, what was that you? He goes, I was hoping you could tell me the Daily Bugle doesn't deliver out here. Pepper says, I can look into it. Send some Avengers send some Avengers over there. I can do that too. But the world is still turning. Tony, are we in trouble? I don't know. When are you coming back? As soon as I figure out how to keep the earth out of the hands of well, everyone. Really good drawing of Tony and Pepper right here. Yeah, my favorite character on two of my favorite teams. I'm not one who likes multiple people on the same team forever, but uh, on two different teams, but man, I, I liked I liked when uh, Tony Stark was on the Guardians. It added a little more human flavor to it, and I could eat it very well. Very well. Uh, anyway, he's down. This new accuser has Gamora. He says, my weapon can only be touched by me. Thought I thought the most dangerous woman in the galaxy would know a signature weapon when she sees it. Again, this dude just loves... When he says that, another kick to the face. I mean, he uh, just cannot uh, keep. She cannot keep her foot away from his head. Uh, he again. He puts the gun to her. Says, "I will make my name with you." I mean, this guy is just out of his league. And all of a, she's, he's getting ready to give her the executioner. And all of a sudden, he's shot through the chest. I know you probably can't see that without me getting way too close. And he just falls over with a hole in his chest. And who who could have shot him, I wonder? Why, it's none other than Rocket Raccoon. He goes, found her! They're, apparently they're looking for her. Good, he goes, good gosh, Gamora, what happened? Who is this uh, Gaboon? He goes, a bounty hunter for you? Yes. How much are you going for? <laughs> Rocket asks. I, I love Rocket. I can't wait to see him in uh, in the movie. He goes, he goes, how much are you going for? Thank you, Rocket, she says. I don't believe you ever said those words. He goes, guys, we got to hustle out of here, out of port. And I have, I may have to upset the local law. And the entire Sparse Rail Guard will be here in about half a par parsec. Oh, I am Gru, he says. Really, this, with flippers, I don't think she was that hot. Uh, he goes, you have weird taste, my friend. He goes, Poor uh, Star Lord can't get anything, and Tony Stark just went home with uh, Gamora. So it's a uh, it's, it's a funny little moment here. Uh, we find that this uh, and it ends with a clenched fist, uh, open fist being clenched. So apparently the accuser's not dead, and we will probably see him at some uh, some other point in the future. All right. Well, I personally love this issue. Uh, this particular one is, uh, yeah, I've just got to say, Sarah Pichel is a magnificent artist. This uh, this art was everything you want out of a comic. It was fluid. It was uh, consistent and just generally uh, a joy to watch. It looked like a pond with a reflection in it. The pages did. It, it, it's so beautiful. Uh, wonderful works of color, just on color. It's it's gorgeous. Um, as far as the scoring goes, for Guardians of the Galaxy number four, I'm going to give the story a 4.5 because it is a general a four a four point nine five is the general um, idea for this one because it is a standalone story. You can pick this up and as long as you know who the characters are, you will get how great of a story this was. The only problem is it's number four, and that's going to hold the story back just a little bit because you have to know what they were doing before and stuff like that. As far as the art goes, it's no question. It's a five. You get it's a it's a small little book. I don't particularly think it's worth three ninety nine, but the art in this book is absolutely worth it. So that's our review for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number four, guys.
That's your redneck re redneck review scoring. Again, is a 4.5 on the store, 4.95 on the story, and a five out of five on the uh, art. Thank you so much. God bless you all.